And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a request for us, has an ask for us in return, that just like I answer your call, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي That let them also answer my call. Meaning what? Meaning the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to do. Whether it's the prayer, whether it's, it's fasting, whether it's zakah, whether it's whatever it may be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Let them also answer my call. وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ And let them believe in me so that they may be guided. So two things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks from us, belief and for us to answer his call. Now, the topic inshallah, as, as you may all realize, is going to be the topic of dua. And the reason I wanted to talk about it is a lot of times it's one of the most neglected, act, neglected acts of worship that we do. It's one of the most neglected acts of worship that we do. And a lot of times there's so many blockers that we have in our life that block us from making dua, that stop us from making dua. But first, let's talk about the importance of dua. Why is dua so important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, لَيْسَ شَيْءٍ أَكْرَمُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنَ الدُّعَى That there is nothing that is more honorable in the, hands, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than dua. There is nothing more honorable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than dua, than the act of worship of dua. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, الدُّعَى هُوَ الْعِبَادَةِ That dua is the essence of worship. That dua is worship. Not that the dua is an act of worship. No, it is worship. And why is it worship? Is because every single time we raise our hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make dua, we're acknowledging that, Ya Allah, you are the master and I am the servant. That, Ya Allah, you are the rich and I am the poor. Ya Allah, you are the strong and I am the weak. Every single time we make dua, we acknowledge that act of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We acknowledge who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and who we are. And then the other, the other thing to know is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Mujib. Al-Mujib, the one who answers. The one who answers. The one who answers any call. In fact, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, he used to always say that that I do not worry about the acceptance of the dua. I worry about me making dua. I'm not worried that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to answer me. I'm not worried that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to accept my dua. I am solely concerned in me remembering to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In me not thinking that I don't need to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we go into transition now into blockers that we have that stop us from making dua that stop us from making dua one of the first ones that come up is we think we're not good enough to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we think that you know what I have too many mistakes I have too many sins I'm not close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I can't be like so and so who's always close to Allah he's always at the masjid he's always praying he's making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I, I Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to answer my dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to answer my dua. But let's look at someone. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights his story in the Quran. Which is shaitan. Shaitan calls out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's dispelled from, from Jannah. And he says what? He asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a request. He basically makes dua. And he says, أَنْدِرْنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُ That allow me to live long enough to be able to live till the day that they are resurrected. That I will be alive from the day Adam was created until the last human dies. Allow me to have that long of a life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? قَالَ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنْذَرِينَ That you are from the people that will have that long of a life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts his, his, his requests. So every single time you think about making dua and you think, hey, I'm not good enough. Remember that shaitan asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to him. And you're not any worse than shaitan. In fact, in, in, another, in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solidifies that feeling for us. And he says, what? 
In this particular ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about people who transgressed against themselves. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ O my servants who have transgressed so much against themselves that you lost hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what in return? قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ That do not forsake in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins in this dunya. No matter what you did, no matter what you could have done in the past. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives it. So He solidifies it for you in this ayah. That don't worry about making dua if you think you're far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other blocker that we have is sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget. And in fact, it's not actually us forgetting. If we think about it a little bit, it's not us forgetting. A lot of times it's actually good times are happening. That we don't think about making du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But trust me, if you enter a plane and there's turbulence, you will make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So it's not about us forgetting about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but a lot of times it's actually about us not realizing that we still need to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of good and in times of ease. I was on a plane a few weeks ago and for 45 minutes there was turbulence. And it wasn't the type of turbulence where, you know, you could sit down and, and, and just try to sleep through it. It was the type of turbulence where you basically, your whole life flashed before your eyes and you realize that it could be meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right now. We're on top of the ocean, we're in the middle of nowhere. There's no land that the, that, the, that the pilot can just land on and skip the storm and then we fly back up again. For 45 minutes straight. And trust me, I made dua for the whole 45 minutes. And for many of us, when we're sitting in Taraweeh and the Imam is making dua for 10, 15 minutes, we're like, Ya Allah, please. Like allow, allow this person to just finish making dua. But I made I made dua for 45 minutes straight and I, I didn't realize how long it was until I looked at the clock. Why? Because of how much fear I was in. So a lot of times we forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we are in times of ease. Everything is going well, you're doing well on your exams, you're getting into the med school that you want to, you're getting the MCAT score that you want to, getting the internship or the job that you want to. Every single thing is, is happening. Everything, everything, every single thing is happening properly. But one of the habits of the companions, Aisha radiallahu anha, she said that we would make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we lost our shoelaces. We would make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we lost our shoelaces. Because we knew that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't will for the shoelace, for us to be able to get another shoelace, it wouldn't happen. So they made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the smallest of things. You missed your bus from Libby to, to Douglas, I'm making dua that the next bus comes before my class starts. It's, it's, it, it doesn't need to be that, Ya Allah, I'm going through a really difficult time, so help me. Sometimes it could be something very small. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to hear your voice. That's the, the point that I'm trying to make is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to hear your voice. Wants to hear the voice of His servants. He wants to hear the voice of his servants. The other reason that we sometimes don't make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is we think that what we're asking is too much for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We think that too much, what we're asking is, is kind of impossible. It's impossible to us, but it's not impossible to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith Qudusi, O my servants, says, O my servants, if the first of you and the last of you, meaning every single creation that was ever created. And he says that for, if the first of you and the last of you, and the jinn of you and the ins of you, the jinn and the humans, if every single creation made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will be able to fulfill every single one of their requests. 
and it would not decrease from my majesty, it would not decrease from my dominion, except like the sewing needle that it dips into the ocean. That drop of water that it lets, that it lets go, that's how much it decreased from the dominion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Basically negligible. Something that you don't even have to think about that it's actually decreased anything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of accepting any request that we have. Now, let's flip it. What are actual blockers to our dua? What are actual things that can allow our dua not to be accepted? Or not to be answered or delayed. One of them, one of them, and this is especially for people that are going in the workplace soon, is consuming from haram income. The Prophet, there's a famous hadith where the Prophet he says that a man is traveling. A man is traveling. That he looks like he went through a lot. You know, when you come out of three exams after not sleeping for two days, probably didn't shower for two days, you look like you went through hell in that time period. So imagine this person is traveling. He's tired. He's exhausted. He's drenched in sweat. There's dirt patches all over his clothes. So he's traveling. And we know that from the Hadith of Prophet Sallam is that the, the dua of the traveler is accepted. Right? The dua of the traveler is accepted. And he's going through a lot. So he's going through a hard time. So it's more likely that his dua would be accepted. It would be more sincere. So he calls out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. And he requests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet answers in return. He says, وَلَكِنْ مَشْرَبُهُ مِنْ حَرَامٍ وَأَكْلُهُ مِنْ حَرَامٍ وَمَلْبَسُهُ مِنْ حَرَامٍ فَأَمَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ that this person, his food is from a haram means. Meaning that he's either consuming haram or whatever he's using to get that food is haram income. Or his clothing or his or his, his drink is from haram. Whether he's also drinking or wearing something that's haram or he's consuming it from means that are, are haram. فَأَمَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ The Prophet ﷺ says, how can this person so I be accepted? Doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't accept your dua if, if you're already in those means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may choose to accept your dua still. But the Prophet ﷺ is warning us that this could be a blocker. This could be a blocker for a dua that you make. So for all of us, inshallah, this is something that you think about when you're starting your career. When you're going into the, to the, to the company that you're going into, when you're going to the field that you're going into, you want to make sure that it is not gonna, it's not going to be from a haram income. And this is a separate conversation. We're not going to go over what's halal or what's haram in terms of career and so on and so forth. But this is a conversation that you can ask about. Whatever field, whatever company you're going into, understanding that this is something that's going to be crucial. Yes, it's going to be, you know, maybe you'll work there for a couple of years and then leave. But understanding that it, it will impact your worship and your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other thing, the other thing that is actually a blocker when it comes to our dua is... Hastening our dua, hastening our dua, where the Prophet ﷺ, he explains this by saying that you make dua and you say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, that, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't answer you right away, so you give up. So you give up. And the Prophet ﷺ warns against something like that because sometimes what you're asking for can take years. I had a give a dua, I give this khutbah at a different masjid, and a brother came to me after. And he said that I have been trying to get married for 10 years. That I've been making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get married for 10 years. And finally, after the 10 years, I met someone. And he says during those 10 years, it wasn't like he, was, he wasn't actively looking. No, he was ready. He was prepared financially. And he was looking for someone. And he kept talking to different people. And every single time, either something wouldn't work out. The families didn't, you know, they didn't were incompatible. The two people were incompatible. He didn't, you know, he didn't see that the relationship was compatible or from her side. Whatever something happened for those 10 years that he wasn't able to find someone. And then finally he finds someone. It takes him actually a few more years after that. And then he finally gets married to that person. 
took him 15 total years from the time that he was he started making dua until he actually got married. And he was making the same dua every single day for those 15 years. He says, Wallahi, there were times that I thought there was something wrong with me. I was making dua and I was like, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like me. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to accept my dua for that reason. You know what? I'll just give up. I'll stop making dua. But he still keeps making dua for 15 years. That's what the Prophet ﷺ meant when he says, don't hasten your dua. I have a friend, he was, he, he's been looking to get married for the last two years. And he's already starting to give up. And Allah, it's a lot harder now than it was before. Especially if you graduated, if you're already out of school, there's not a lot of people around that you could possibly meet. It's harder, it becomes harder. So, not hastening when you're making dua. I'll tell you another story about not hastening. And it actually goes back to understanding that our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be calculated the same way we calculate our relationships with each other. One of the first things that I said is a blocker for us a lot of times is we think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't accept my dua because I'm someone who's not that great. I'm someone who's not that great. But this is more of a personal story, inshallah, we'll, we'll close with that. When me and my wife were starting or, or trying to have a baby, one of the, one of the, before I actually start, one of the habits of the companions during Ramadan is that they would choose three or four things and they would make dua for throughout the whole month. You know, maybe they want a job, maybe they want to get married, maybe they want to have kids, whatever it may be. They would focus on making these specific du'as every single day throughout the whole month of Ramadan. And they would say that by the time the next Ramadan came, that du'a would be accepted, that du'a would be fulfilled. So whenever, the first time that I heard this was a few years ago, and I started doing it. And wallahi, I'm not a saint, not someone who's special, not someone whose du'a is always accepted, but it truly works. Ramadan is special in that, in that sense. If you make a du'a in that month consistently, by the next Ramadan, it's accepted. By the next Ramadan, you will see the fruits of that du'a. So I was making du'a, me and my wife were making du'a for a child. And again, this is from a year to a year. Trying, she's going to doctors, she's checking on a few things and there's some delays. There's some delays. And it gets to a point where, you know, six months pass, eight months pass, everyone that's, that I know around us is it's a little bit of a quicker process. And again, it's our first child, so we don't know. But it gets to a point where I start thinking that maybe something is wrong with me. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't accept my dua because of the sins that I have, because of the mistakes that I have. I start putting my understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same understanding we have each other. If I'm angry with someone, I'm not going to answer your phone. Like if you call me, I'm not answering you. 100%. If I'm angry with you and I'm upset with you and I, I don't like you at the moment, if you text me, if you call me, if you come to my door, I'm not going to answer. Sometimes we, when we interact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we interact in the same way. But this is a few weeks, this is a few weeks now in the next Ramadan. So the next Ramadan actually came. I still don't know if my wife is pregnant or not. Two weeks in, or actually the first week, the first few days, went to my parents' house, we had dinner, just the usual, you had a thought there, came back home, we prayed, we came back home. My wife isn't feeling well. And sometimes it happens, you know, she, you know, maybe the food was bad, you know, maybe something, something happened. She says that she's not feeling well. And she throws up and she's, you know, she's, her stomach is really hurting. She's like, I've never felt like this before. I was like, can we just go get a pregnancy test? So we go, we get two, we get like the, you know, three kinds just to make sure that it's, you know, it's accurate. We get the most expensive one just to make sure that it's, you know, it's, it's right. And subhanAllah, she gets, she gets tested and she finds out she's pregnant. And she's two weeks pregnant. Meaning what? The dua was accepted before Ramadan started. The dua was accepted before Ramadan started. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes will test you in this way. He will keep you to the last minute. To test your trust in Him. To test your trust in Him. So understanding that the dua of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the dua we make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's something that we should be making frequently. In fact, I'm sorry, the last thing that I'll end with, inshallah, is 
the Prophet ﷺ, he said that every single dua that we make is accepted. But it's answered in a few ways. One of them is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give you exactly what you asked for. You asked for a red Ferrari, he gives you a red Ferrari. But sometimes, sometimes, you will ask for a red Ferrari, but you have a, a good Toyota Camry, it's working, everything is, is good with it. Still 50,000 50, miles, it's still working in great conditions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides, instead of giving you the red Ferrari, He decides not to get you in an accident with the Toyota. He saves you from an accident, He saves you from a hardship. That's the second way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may answer. Or the third way is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not accept that dua because He knows if you get a red Ferrari, you're going to get into an accident. You're going to be reckless, you're going to be getting tickets every single week, you're going to lose all your money just on tickets and just on that Ferrari. So instead, he decides not to accept that dua, not to answer that dua and give you what you want. And instead, he gives it to you on the Day of Judgment. So the companions, when they heard it, says, Ya Rasulullah, we'll make so much dua. And he said, go ahead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be able to give you more for every single dua that you make that isn't an answer. So don't be afraid of just asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because worst case, you'll get it on the Day of Judgment. So it's a win-win situation in this case. So inshallah to conclude, um, I'll share one last hadith. Uh, this is something that I found, I heard it very recently. Um, and I've always shared it in almost every single khutbah that I gave. Um, the Prophet, and again for those who came later, we were talking about dua and the importance of making dua and some of the blockers and some of the things that we want to do to so ensure that dua is, is accepted. One of the things, and this is going to be helpful for inshallah all of you. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that whenever any of us wake up, whenever any of us wake up unintentionally, meaning what? You are stressing about the next exam, you're waking up in the middle of the night, you didn't mean to actually wake up. You didn't have an alarm set, it wasn't fetched the time, it was just you're waking up in the middle of the night. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that if you are waking up in this way, then, and you say, you're still in bed, you didn't get out of bed, and you say, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, lahul mulk wa lahul hamdu, huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. It's a dua, it's a, it's a supplication that you make. You can look it up, it's, it's very famous. Uh, la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, lahul mulk wa lahul hamdu, huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. The quick translation of it is, La ilaha illallah, there is no God worthy of worship, or there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. Wahdahu la sharika la, that he is one, he has... Uh, no partners, he has no associates. Associates, lahul mulk wa lahul hamd. That to him belongs all dominion and kingdom, and to him belongs all praise. Wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. And he is capable and has ownership over everything. If you make this dua, and then you say, Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. You say these, this, and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. You say, Rabbi ghfilli. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Or make any other dua, it will be accepted. Make any other dua, it will be accepted. The Prophet even went on to say that if you got up and you made wudu, that you prayed, those two rakahs that you pray will be accepted. So for many of us, if you're going through exams, and subhanAllah, this, a lot of times when we have hard time sleeping, it's because something is going on, right? You're stressing about an exam, you're stressing about an application, something happened in your life that just keeping you uneasy throughout your sleep. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you what? A way out. A way out. That you're stressing about something when it wakes you up from your sleep. Make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieves you of it. Make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieves you of it. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who always have an accepted dua. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allow us to be able of to be able of those who always remember him and worry about making dua. Not that dua is accepted itself. I ask Allah to make us of those who have Good careers that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are pleasing to us. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrida. Wa thabit Allahumma al-haqqa uddamana wa al-sula wa al-qabil kafirin. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa akhiru salam.